Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to do our sixth winter 2023-2024 look ahead. Now last week's winter look ahead we had a look at the latest Copernicus data for all the various longer range charts indicating what sort of plot, uh, pressure patterns we could be seeing over the winter period. Now this was updated only last week and had all of October's data but not only do we get uh, data updated for the pressure charts but we also get it for the polar vortex and today that is what we're going to be concentrated uh, concentrating on. Now you can probably see by the screen at the moment we've got the zonal mean winds at 10 HPM. We're going to have a look at what the various models. We've got seven models to look at today. We're starting on the CFS and they'll go through all the various Copernicus charts again. All the brand new October data that only came out last week and already spoilers some are showing a very weak polar vortex and perhaps even a weak polar vortex to start the winter which is very interesting indeed but equally some are not showing anything too weak the one correlation i am seeing is that very few of these runs are showing it uh, stronger than average at best the runs are showing it in around the normal mean or the climatological mean so very interesting seeing that and if we go back to our past few winter updates having a look at uh, especially the Copernicus data last week definitely we're still indicating blocking patterns into the new year January February time which again could correlate to an early season weak polar vortex sort of filtering through the atmosphere potentially to give indications of blocking patterns but again we are just trying to picture it uh, put it all together and the polar vortex and the zonal mean winds at 10 hpa are something that can change very very quickly and can have huge impacts on the surface weather and can throw things completely out we could have all the analogs and all the patterns for blocking weather at the surface from all the other climate drivers but if we have a very strong polar vortex then it can throw everything off Equally, it can work the other way. Every can be, it could be pointing towards westerly winds, very unsettled, strong jet stream. We see a sudden stratospheric warming that uh, could completely reverse it. So if you do start on the zonal mean winds chart from the weatherscool.com, this is looking at the CFS. We've got the GFS data, and you can see we're actually going to see a stronger than an average polar vortex over the next couple of weeks. But we're more interested in the CFS data, as the next couple of weeks really doesn't mean too much. The polar vortex starts to have significant impacts on winter weather as we head into sort of middle to end of November. Now, very interestingly, we've got some various CFS uh, charts here. Now, if we take off the bias corrected CFS first, you can see we've got two CFS runs uh, shown here. Again, sort of operational CFS charts, not really ensembles here. But you can see there are two runs and both are showing weaker than average polar vortex or weaker than average winds at 10 HBA over the North Pole through much of December. Uh, and both were really showing it in January. And even one of these charts showing a sudden stratospheric warming in late November and another one in early January. Again, that would be exceptional if that came off. And if we didn't see proper winter weather with that, then we'd be throwing all uh, our sort of knowledge out of the windows. That would indicate lots of blocking weather and lots of cold weather. Very interesting seeing that. But remember, that is the uncorrected CFS. If we actually put the bias corrected CFS on, you can see that not as much of a weaker than average normally apart from one of the runs which is still showing a sun stratospheric warming at the end of november now take note of that end of november early december point because as we'll see throughout this video some of the other runs as well are perhaps not indicating a sudden stratospheric warming and reversal of the zonal mean winds but definitely suggesting perhaps a weakness, um, a weakening of those winds. And remember, in these longer range charts, we're not trying to pinpoint exactly what's going to happen. We're trying to look at trends and looking at sort of probabilities. So if all the runs or a lot of the runs are indicating a certain sort of pattern in a sort of a couple of week or month period, then that can start to help us have stronger guesses on what could be going on. Very interesting seeing that from the CFS today and you can see the red dotted line showing what it was last year we saw sun stratospheric warming the end of february gave cold weather into march and april but 
pretty late on then. But you see, through the crunch time of winter, January, February time, it was very strong, uh, the polar vortex. The CFS here showing average to below average. Now, the first Copernicus chart we go to is the CMCC. Uh, again, we'll have a look at this, and you can see generally, if we look at the thicker blue line, which is sort of the average of all the ensembles, it's generally hovering up and down around the mean. This run really not showing much. The black line is the daily climatology. Again, what you'd if you averaged all the last, let's say, 100 years, that's what you kind of would expect. And we're deviating from it a little bit, but not massively. Some very, very strong ensemble members, some very, very weak ensemble members, but no massive correlation. So CMCC not really showing us anything. As I said, generally just a pretty much an average sort of chart here. So we'll skip over it quite quickly. It's not really showing anything out of the ordinary. But we'll, of course, take it to know it is a run that is showing pretty much an average polar vortex through much of the winter. Now, if you do have a look at the DWD, the Icon run, very interesting indeed. It's almost the same as the CMCC, but completely shifted by 10 metres per second downwards. And again, look at that end of November, early December point. That's where a lot of the DWD run, uh, the DWD, DWD on saw members, have shown a very weak polar vortex. Only maybe 20% are showing a sudden stratospheric warming. So a small minority of them are. But a large proportion of them are showing down well below the, uh, the daily climatology. A large portion of them are below the 25, uh, 25th percentile there. Just showing you the big anomaly developing here. Again, it doesn't mean it's definitely going to happen, but it is something to take note. Perhaps the one thing we would say with this is the fact that it is well below average for much of the winter. Perhaps could suggest there is a little bit of a bias here. Again, we can only really infer that. Um, but regardless, even if there is a bit of a bias here, still is showing a significant weakening, even if we corrected this up a little bit, so that periods of where it's at its highest is more towards the average. It still is showing quite a weak first month or so of winter. If we do compare to the ECMWF, much more in around the average, but definitely slightly below by maybe five meters per second. Again, showing a little bit of an awakening through November, but really only a little bit below average for it trends back towards average through the new year and then weak again into the early part of 2024. So again, not suggesting anything massive, very similar to the CMCC, but more shifted slightly below average again. And remember what I said at the start of the video, most of the runs are average to below average in terms of polar vortex mean wind speeds. If we do have a look at the Meteo France run, again, mostly below average. It doesn't have that shift in November, though. We must have a look at that. It's more towards the average there. It's weaker as we head into the middle of winter. Again, the differences between these shots to show you how experimental and uncertain this is. But again... Another run where it's showing it generally weaker than average. If we do finish up into the last two runs, the Met Office run, again, a weakening around early November in towards December, strengthening and around average to maybe slightly above average into the new year, and then pretty much mirroring the climatology all the way until April. So again, interesting seeing that. Remember, this Met Office run will most likely go into their uh, longer term forecasts and their uh, planning uh, documents as well that they have to that they, they publish every month so it'll be very interesting to see what this month's update will show especially with perhaps a weaker than average polar vortex from their own run again very few going for a sudden stratospheric warming but quite a lot going for relatively weak polar vortex and to finish if we look at the gma it pretty much mirrors uh the climatology very similar to the cm CC. So we've had a look at all the runs and you can see many are around average, but also many are below average. Very few showing anything much above average. So again, that is a very interesting sign. Now, hopefully, I know I've gone through this video quite quickly, hopefully most of you know the implications of a weaker than average polar vortex, but if you haven't, you've hung around, I'll explain very briefly now. Essentially, the polar vortex is the main sort of wind driver 
of uh, of the northern hemisphere it goes in a westerly direction so winds for the uk coming off the north atlantic and it is powered by very cold air developing well above the north pole high up into the stratosphere because of winter essentially the sun is not hitting the northern hemisphere anywhere near as strong or at all really over the north pole for a good month of the year and it eventually develops a very cold pool of air and that contrast the very warm air near the equator collides to form the polar vortex and it doesn't really exist in the summer it actually goes into reversal because that north pole warms up as the sun gets stronger uh, or has more of an influence over the north hemisphere during the summer month so it doesn't really exist in the summer not really a big climate driver but formed through the aut- autumn and, and it's forming and strengthening right now peaking around the christmas time to the early new year and if it gets disrupted it can sort of put the whole uh, atmosphere of the northern hemisphere out of tilt. Uh, It can essentially slow down the jet stream, which is the big band of wind towards the troposphere, so where our weather takes place. Um, And again, can develop blocking patterns, can develop northerly, easterly winds, if that sort of pattern develops. And again, southern stress formings have historically had some very cold weather events associated with it but we always do tend to forget the sudden stress rate warmings that have you know a couple of days of cold weather a brief northerly wind or not much happening at all we've seen many sudden stress rate warmings about three or four now since the beast in the east in 2018 we've seen it in most of the years in fact um but we haven't seen any impacts anywhere near as extreme as that we have seen cold weather like the march that's just gone uh, earlier this year it was very cold we saw lots of heavy snowfall amber warnings issued for snow in march and again that can be correlated back to the sun stress for warming we saw uh, at late february early march but again it won't get talked about that much as it was severe at the time but it wasn't you know generational like the beast from the east uh, is remembered to be so there is a lot that can happen with this a weak uh, polar vortex doesn't always mean cold weather, but more than a- more than average it does. So that's why we do look at it in quite intensely. And again, it's another indicator on what could be happening overall this winter. And as we've seen through this video, there definitely is a trend of average to below average polar vortex speed, perhaps a bit of a correlation, some clustering of a weaker period in November into early December. Again, doesn't quite align with the overall uh, patterns we're seeing from lots of the regional, uh, sorry, lots of the long-term models, which this suggests perhaps cold weather and blocking patterns into the new year. But again, could spice things up and give quite an eclectic mix this winter. Could be really ramping up to be a very uh, interesting winter for model watching. Most years are, some years are very dull and boring, but this definitely looks like it could be one that it is of keen interest um and remember in about three or four weeks time that's when winter potential really does kick off so we're not too far away only got a few more of these winter updates to go it'll be very interesting to see the latest copernicus data in november which will come out in about two and a half weeks time that will be extremely interesting as that'll be the first that will that'll be the last proper update we have before winter does truly arrive so anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. If you haven't watched the past couple of winter updates, especially last week's, do check that out. As that is as up to date data as we've seen today. So do check that video out. And again, a little bit more uh, tropospheric based, looking at the pressure patterns. Whereas this is very much wind speeds well away from our weather, but has strong impact. So do check that video out if you are interested. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.